Welcome back to Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to continue our discussion of fatty acid metabolism by looking at the beta oxidation pathway. So in the past two videos, we've discussed really four major steps. We've talked about how fatty acids are liberated from adipose tissue via lipases. We generally talked about that. We mentioned that those fatty acids then are transported in the blood, found to serum albumin, and maybe some other proteins. And once those proteins get to cells or tissues that require fatty acids for metabolism, the fatty acids move from those proteins, such as albumin, into the cell that requires it. And so when those fatty acids, like this one right here, gets into the cell's cytosol or cytoplasm, there's an enzyme here called fatty acyl coesynthetase that connects or ligates the fatty acid to a coenzyme A, which we abbreviate as CoA. So first of all, this molecule right over here, this is a fatty acid. It has 16 carbons on it, so here's one carbon, two, three, four, and you can count them all the way out to 16. Whenever we attach the coenzyme A onto the fatty acid via this enzyme, the number of carbons is constant, and then we have this coenzyme A here on the end. So we go from a 16 carbon fatty acid to a 16 carbon derivative called an acyl-CoA. Now remember, acyl-CoA really just is very general. It doesn't tell us how many carbons it is, okay? Uh, but there's a lot of acyl-CoAs. We could have a 16 carbon acyl-CoA, we could have a 14 carbon acyl-CoA, we could have an 18 carbon acyl-CoA. So really, acyl-CoA is very general. So I'm specifying here how many carbons it has, okay? But in any case, any acyl-CoA that we generate has to then move into the mitochondrial matrix. And this process was in, a, in another video where we talked about the carnitine shuttle. And it's a little bit more complicated than simply just moving this acyl-CoA across two membranes into the matrix of the mitochondria. But we're going to gloss over that here and just assume that we now have this 16-carbon acyl-CoA here in the mitochondrial matrix. And this is where we have the enzymes for beta oxidation. And so therefore, beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. Now in general, beta oxidation is really just a pathway for the metabolism of a fatty acid, or in this case, the derivative acyl-CoA. And so really what beta oxidation is, is it's a pathway, metabolic pathway for the metabolism of a fatty acid like this, or more specifically the derivative acyl-CoA, in which this gets busted up into a bunch of two carbon units called acetyl-CoAs. That's an important thing. The acyl-CoA refers to this long carbon chain with the coenzyme A on it, okay? It's just the coenzyme A derivative of the fatty acid. Acetyl-CoA is always defined as just two carbons. So I'm gonna skip ahead to this slide very quickly and show you acetyl-CoA. Here's acetyl-CoA, it's just two carbons, one carbon, two carbon, okay? Acyl-CoA refers to pretty much anything longer than two carbons. So notice, here's a four-carbon acyl-CoA, and this one is specifically acetyl-CoA because it's two carbons. So basically, we're going to get a bunch of these, a bunch of acetyl-CoAs, from the metabolism of the fatty acid. And on this slide, which we'll come back to in a minute, it looks a little busy. All this over here is just glycolysis, so ignore this. But here, once we're in the mitochondria, which is represented by this yellow box, we're going to take our acyl-CoA and run it through a series of four enzymes, which is beta oxidation. And then we're going to just see how this works in a few minutes. But let's not jump the gun. Let's get an understanding for the basic mechanics of beta oxidation. So instead of starting with our 16 carbon example, let's start with a smaller six carbon example. So right here, this is a six carbon acyl-CoA. We have one carbon, two, three, four, five, and six. So beta oxidation occurs in what we call rounds, okay? Every round of beta oxidation is gonna split off an acetyl-CoA as you see right here. And each round of beta oxidation, this acyl-CoA is gonna react with a series of four enzymes always in the same order. So let's see what happens here. Here we're starting with a six carbon acyl-CoA. The first enzyme here is, is termed acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. And in this reaction, what happens is that 
we end up getting an oxidation of this carbon-carbon bond. It goes from a single bond to a double bond. Now, for very basic understanding, you don't really need to know so much about that, but understand that we actually get out an FADH2 here. Remember that FADH2 was also a product of the Krebs cycle. So we're actually getting some batteries, so to speak, for the electron transport chain. So we get out an FADH2 here. We're then going to hydrate this double bond, get a hydroxyl group. That's catalyzed by the second enzyme, enoyl coa hydratase. And then this hydroxyl group, or OH group, is oxidized into a ketone, and this is through the action of the third enzyme, beta hydroxyacyl coa dehydrogenase. The significance of the third enzyme is we gain an NADH. The NADH is actually produced by the oxidation of this OH group, or hydroxyl group, into this double bond, this ketone. So what we see here is within the first three enzymes of each round of beta oxidation, we get an FADH2 and we get an NADH. Now we have this molecule right here. It's still six carbons, but the terminal enzyme or fourth enzyme in beta oxidation is going to split this bond right here. Okay? And the enzyme is termed thiolase, and what it does is it takes everything to the left of this and turns it into an acyl CoA, so we get a CoA on it. Notice that everything to the left of this dotted line right here, we have one, two, three, four. So we get off a four carbon acyl CoA. Everything to the right of this dotted line where it gets split, that's just one, two. So it's just two carbons. So this thing that comes off right here that's two carbons, that's just acetyl CoA. And just to give you some foreshadowing, Remember, acetyl-CoA goes into the Krebs cycle. So when we come back to the overview in a couple of minutes, we'll see that all these acetyl-CoAs that we produce at the end of every round of beta oxidation, they just go into the Krebs cycle, uh, which is the same cycle that consumed the acetyl-CoA produced from glycolysis. So there we can actually see how beta oxidation actually feeds into the same pathway that the glycolysis does. Okay, so coming back here, We've now produced a two-carbon acetyl-CoA and a four-carbon acyl-CoA. Why does that make sense? Well, if we split something that was six carbons, we should get four and two. Four plus two is six. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, this acetyl-CoA will then go into the Krebs cycle. But we're not done with this four-carbon acyl-CoA. What do you think is going to happen there? Well, it's just going to undergo a second round of beta oxidation. Okay? But instead of starting with six carbons, as we did up here, we're now starting with what we had at the end of the previous round. So it's a four-carbon acyl-CoA. And the order of these enzymes and what they do is identical. Okay? So in the first step, we get out an FADH2. Okay? We have a second step. We're really not concerned so much about that. We then have a third step here where we get out an NADH. And then we're left with this molecule right here, which again is still four carbons, one, two, three, and four. The terminal enzyme in beta oxidation, thiolase, is then gonna cleave this bond right here. Notice it's the same bond that we actually saw in the first cleavage in the first round of beta oxidation. So when I cleave this, everything to the left of it comes over here as a CoA. So here's one, two. So actually this will give us an acetyl-CoA. And then over here we have one, two to the right of this split. That's also an acetyl-CoA. Now it's important to understand about when we get down to the four carbon acetyl-CoA, when we get to the end of that round of beta oxidation, you always get two acetyl-CoAs. Okay? If the acetyl-CoA is longer than four carbons, so six, eight, 10, 12, like what we saw up here, then at the end of that round, you'll get an acetyl-CoA, and then you'll get an acyl-CoA. Okay? In other words, if you started here with a six-carbon acyl-CoA, after that round, it should be down to a four-carbon acyl-CoA plus acetyl-CoA. If you had started this round with a 16-carbon acyl-CoA, then at the end of this round, this would be a 14-carbon acyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA. So at the end of each round, the sum of these two molecules, carbon atoms, have to sum to what you had at the start of that round. So if we had some weird situation where this was 90 carbons, you would never see that, 90 carbon acyl-CoA, 
This one would be an 88 carbon acyl CoA and then always acetyl CoA, two carbons. 88 plus two is 90. In this case, four plus two is six. In this very last round, because we started with a four carbon acyl CoA, the only way we can split that is to get two and two. And so we get two acetyl CoA. So always two of those in the last round. So hopefully this gives you an understanding of the basic mechanics of beta oxidation. Now let's go back to our original example. So we transported a 16 carbon fatty acid into the cell. We ligated it to coenzyme A via fatty acyl CoA synthetase and then transported that acyl CoA into the mitochondrial matrix. So now we have this 16 carbon acyl CoA. And these one, two, three, and fours right here actually just represent the steps of beta oxidation. Okay? So let's look at the first round on a 16 carbon acyl CoA. So we would cut it down to a 14 carbon acyl CoA and acetyl CoA. Remember acetyl CoA is always two carbons, so two plus 14 must equal 16. But every time we have a round of beta oxidation, we always cut it by two carbons. And those two carbons cut, come off as acetyl CoA, and we're left with that 14 carbon acyl CoA. Again, that round of beta oxidation is going to give us an FADH2 and an NADH. This 14 carbon acyl CoA will continue down here, undergo another round of beta oxidation, and if we cut down 14 carbons by two, we'll have a 12 carbon acyl CoA and acetyl CoA, which is two carbons. Again, this round's going to give us an FADH2 and an NADH. This 12 carbon acyl CoA is going to come down here and do a third round of beta oxidation. We're going to cut down 12 carbons by two, so that's going to give us a 10 carbon acyl CoA and an acetyl CoA, two carbons. And I think you're starting to get the picture here. Each round we get an NADH and an FADH2, and then the acyl CoA is just going to continue into another round, and so on and so forth. Okay? So a couple things here. One, you can see that the longer the fatty acid is, the more FADH2, the more NADH we're going to get, and also the more acetyl CoAs we're going to get. I mentioned this a few minutes ago. These acetyl CoAs that are going to be the products of beta oxidation, they're actually going to run into the Krebs cycle, right? And remember from a couple videos ago that the Krebs cycle, when it goes around here, per acetyl CoA, we get two carbon dioxides, which are waste products, we get one ATP, but we also get three NADHs and one FADH2 per acetyl CoA. So if we got, let's say, 10 acetyl CoAs, let's say, then we'd have 30 NADHs from the Krebs cycle and 10 FADH2s from the Krebs cycle per all that acetyl CoA. So you can start to see that with longer fatty acids and all these acetyl CoAs we're getting, we can start to build up batteries for the electron transport chain very quickly in terms of NADH and FADH2. And also you can see here how these acetyl CoAs that are the products of beta oxidation feed into the same pathway, that is the Krebs cycle, that the acetyl CoA from glycolysis came into. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now the very last thing I wanted to talk about is the math of beta oxidation, because this can also be important. We have a fatty acid right here. This is our same 16 carbon fatty acid from before. And we want to determine a few things. First of all, we want to figure out how many acetyl CoAs are produced from it. We want to figure out how many cycles or rounds of beta oxidation are required to completely metabolize this. How many NADHs are produced and how many FADH2s are produced. Okay? Before we answer that question, or all these questions, I want to look at this picture right here. Okay? Uh, this is a game we used to play when I was a little kid called Red Rover. And what happened is, is you had a bunch of kids stand on one side of the line. We all held hands like this. And then on the other side, one kid would be called over, and you'd have to run as fast as you can and try to run through any one of these kids' hands and break them apart. Okay? That was Red Rover. Now, assuming that this guy on the left is not holding anyone over here, and this person on the right, I think that's a girl, is not holding anyone over here, how many hands would you have to break in order to break apart all of these kids from holding hands? Okay? So first of all, how many kids are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you might be tempted to say, well, you'd have to break it seven times, right? The answer is no. You'd only have to break it six. Think about it. 
Assuming that this kid on the left is not holding anyone over here, this kid on the right is not holding anyone over here, here's one break, two, three, four, five, and six. So it turns out that the number of times you actually have to break these apart is actually always one less than the total number of kids. And that's important to remember. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now in terms of the number of acetyl-CoA's produced from total beta oxidation of this fatty acid, all you do is you take the number of carbon atoms and divide by two. The reason for that is acetyl-CoA's are two carbon units. So if we think about this, this fatty acid 16 carbons. So how many two carbon units are in 16 carbons? Well, there's eight. Eight times two is 16. Here's one two carbon unit. Here's the second one, third one, fourth, fifth, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so the number of acetyl-CoA produced is always half the number of total carbons. If you had another fatty acid that was 20 carbons, that would be arachidic acid, then it would be 10 acetyl-CoA's. 20 divided by 2, in this case it's 16 divided by 2, which would be 8. Now, in terms of the number of rounds of beta oxidation needed to completely bust up this 16 carbon fatty acid, it would be one less than half the number of carbon atoms. Okay? Think about it, how many two carbon units can we get? How many acetyl-CoA's? We said 8. Well, in order to break that apart, you'd only need seven rounds of beta oxidation. Just like here, to break apart these seven kids right here, you'd need only six people to run across to break their hands, right? Only six, always one less. So here, if we can make eight acetyl-CoA's, we'd only need to have seven rounds of beta oxidation. We'd split here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So number of rounds of beta oxidation, always one less. So seven rounds in this case. If we had a 20 carbon fatty acid, we would need nine rounds because 20 over two is 10, minus one is nine. Now the nice thing for saturated fatty acids like this one, so there's no double bonds in them, okay? Between the carbons that is. The number of NADH and FADH2 that are produced is always equal to the number of rounds of beta oxidation. Well that makes sense because remember what we got per round of beta oxidation, we got one FADH2, and one NADH. We went to the next round, we've got another FADH2, another NADH. So that means that for every round of beta oxidation we do, we're going to have one NADH produced and one FADH2. So in other words, if I have seven rounds of beta oxidation, I'm going to produce seven NADH and seven FADH2. So these last three are actually always equal for a saturated fatty acid, and that's generally what we're talking about but the acetyl-CoA is always going to be half the number of, of total carbon atoms, and we don't have to subtract that one. So this would be 8 acetyl-CoA, 7 rounds of beta oxidation, 7 NADHs, and 7 FADH2s. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of beta oxidation. Hopefully you understand the basic mechanics of this, and hopefully you can use that understanding to figure out and predict how much of each nutrient, let's say NADH and FADH2, that we get per fatty acid given a certain number of carbon atoms. Okay. Um, in the next video, we're actually going to see how this NADH and FADH2 feed into the electron transport chain, and we'll see that they actually power oxidative phosphorylation. They act as batteries for that process. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.